Put on by Cunning, by Ruth Rendell, read by George Baker. Against the angels and apostles in the windows, the snow fluttered like tucked down as the rector of St. Peter's King's Markham came to the end of the second lesson. Two of his listeners turned their eyes to the pattern the snow was making and waited expectantly. The rector cleared his throat. I publish the bounds of marriage between Sheila Catherine Wexford, spinster of this parish, and Andrew Paul Thoverton, bachelor of the parish of St. John Hampstead. This is for the first time of asking. And between Manuel Camargue, widower of this parish, and Dinah Baxter Sternhold, widow of the parish of St. Mary Forby, this is the third time of asking. If any of you know cause or just impediment why these persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, ye are to declare it. Manuel Camargue resigned himself to the sermon. As the congregation settled itself, he looked about him. He saw only one newcomer, a beautiful fair-haired girl, whom he instantly recognized, Sheila Wexford, the actress. He and Dinah had seen her in that Somerset Maugham revival. She had been at school with Dinah. They still knew each other slightly. Her bands had been called before his, but her name hadn't registered because of the insertion of Catherine. It was odd that two people as famous as they should have had their bands called simultaneously in this country parish church. Her eye caught his, and she gave him a smile that was conspiratorial, rueful, gay, ever so slightly embarrassed, all those things expressed as only an actress of her caliber could express them. Camargue countered with a smile of his own. It was still snowing. Sheila Wexford put an umbrella up and made an elegant dash towards the lich gate. When he reached the gate, he saw her getting into a car driven by a man at least old enough to be her father. He felt a pang for her. Was this the bridegroom? And then the absurdity of such a thought, coming from him, struck him forcefully. Ted was in the Mercedes. There you are, Sir Manuel. I'll put a rug in, seeing it's got so perishing. What a kind chap you are, said Camargue. Let's hope it'll warm up for the wedding. If he hadn't held his employer in such honour and respect, Ted would have said he'd have his love to keep him warm. Camargue knew this and smiled to himself. Dinah, he thought. My Dinah. Towards her, he felt a desire as passionate, as youthful, as intense, as any he had known as a boy. But he would never touch her. His mouth curled with distaste at the idea of it. It would be enough for him. Sample complete. Ready to continue?